Hello and welcome to the next edition of our Lviv International Talks. And today we have a great guest from uh, Kyiv who is running since October last year a uh, UNESCO uh, Ukraine desk in Kyiv, uh, Kiara Detsi Bardeski. Uh, welcome to our studio in Tvoimisto or your city media hub. Uh, You've been working recently, from what I know, in mainly in countries of Africa. Uh, you've been developing many different programs uh, in, in different countries, launching UNESCO offices, UNESCO desks. And now you work in Ukraine for how much? For how long? Like well, since eight, beginning of October. Eight, nine? Yes, months. Months. And what is your... Uh, what is your um, what can you say so far uh, what have you learned about ukraine thank you very much for first of all the invitation and the interest you are for your interest on unesco action in uh, ukraine uh, as you mentioned i arrived in ukraine in october but unesco action and support to uh, ukrainian people and institutions started uh, since the uh, outbreak of the Russian full-scale invasion of uh, Ukraine in February 22. And uh, since the beginning, the attention and the main areas of um, operation of UNESCO has been mainly three. Mm -hmm. The safety of journalists and continuing broadcasting information, especially for access of those information to people and communities, often also with, as you know, a um, shortcut of electricity, of possibility to reach this information. So it was very important to do that, protecting journalists as well to continue and do their work. The second, the continuity of learning, uh, focusing on uh, distance learning, providing the education system, teachers with the opportunity to connect with the students, uh, but also uh, mental health and psychosocial support for children. And, uh, and this is an area, uh, to come to your question, uh, that uh, with time uh, we see that it's even more relevant and where mm -hmm. efforts also will be required in the, not only in the very short term, but also in the medium and long mm -hmm. term. Uh, how to help uh, children, communities, uh, teachers, uh, they all the full education system where UNESCO have the specific mandate for this action to overcome traumas, to cope with this and to build a resilient uh, society and knowledge society. And the third but not uh, least is the protection of uh, cultural heritage which is articulated over two main uh, access. One is the physical protection of uh, culture in all its mm -hmm. form, but the second is the, uh, the livelihood of artists, professionals working in this domain. So the approach is really very human-centered, looking on how to continue support. We know today um, at uh, more than one year time distance from the starting of the invasion that uh, there had been an important, uh, as I mentioned, outflow of professionals, uh, of uh, artists, of creators, but also livelihood of uh, communities of people has been enormously reduced. Mm -hmm. So this is also considered all these three, act three areas are contributing to maintain these uh, social and cultural ties with community, among communities, among people, reestablish a sense of wellness and normalcy, and to to enforce re resilience. Can you tell something more in details? How do you do this uh, in terms of making this helping the livelihood, livelihood, livelihood of uh, people who are in culture and also? saving the heritage, which is especially in such a uh, great danger in East and South of Ukraine today? The, 
uh, how do we protect uh, culture? We assist Ukrainians to mm -hmm. protect cultural heritage physically. Uh, actually, we since uh, August, we have been agreeing and signing a letter of intent with the Ministry of uh, Culture Information Policy about some uh, key priority areas uh, around uh, these uh, two axes that I mentioned. In terms of uh, how do we protect site, the information, the documentation, assessment of uh, damaged heritage, the monitoring of this is uh, crucial. And uh, what UNESCO has been uh, assisting is uh, building a platform uh, to um, regularly, daily uh, update and check uh, damage to heritage. This is happening uh, through uh, satellite analysis, uh, image analysis, mm -hmm. and uh, accompanied by in the field uh, verification mm -hmm. when this is possible. That, that's what you did recently in the vivo, so uh, when we had the rec most recent uh, earth Absolutely. Trials. It's May 1st done through, mm -hmm. through satellite imagery analysis, 24-48 hours immediately after, and this is giving the uh, magnitude also of uh, the damage. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, the platform, the list of sites, it's also published on UNESCO uh, webpage for Ukraine. And today we have uh, 265 sites that are damaged. I repeat, verified damage. This does not mean that 265 mm -hmm, mm -hmm. is the... Much more. Yes, and uh, this is also actually uh, confirmed by the uh, rapid damage and need assessment to which UNESCO has been contributed together with uh, the, uh, the, the government and also World Bank and uh, other UN, where UNESCO has been particularly as, uh, coordinating with uh, in the sector of culture and the impact uh, that has been uh, identified in terms of damage is in terms of uh, physical damage 2.6 uh, billion. Losses in terms of uh, revenues losses, in terms of uh, what we will, uh, the, the, um, I mean, in, over the term of 10 years is more than 15 billion. This Euro. means uh, US dollars. Euros. Yes. Dollars. So this mm. means that in the next 10 years, to rebuild the cultural sector, we will need uh, almost 7 billion, uh, which is uh, quite impressive as a figure if we consider that this is calculated at uh, February 23. But the uh, situation, the situation is still uh, ongoing. I mentioned damage assessment, but this damage assessment is a key to understand the consistency of damage, to identify um, intervention that are required in, uh, in emergency context, how to repair quickly, intervene, and to prioritize those uh, intervention. So this is another area when, when we speak about the protection, it's not just uh, accounting for damage, mm -hmm. but it's already as a two dimension. One is the repair after attacks, but there is uh, ahead a important consistent work that is done in terms of uh, prevention, in terms of how to prevent, how to mitigate uh, possible uh, eventual uh, damages. And this is done uh, in several ways. Uh, can you tell me more about this way? <laughs> because it's, it's very interesting to understand what can we do to prevent. Uh, to prevent, uh, for instance, uh, I think that many measures you can also see here in Lviv. Eh? Mm -hmm. You have uh, measures which are very, I would say, maybe symbolic, eh? but very important because they have also in legal implication and advocacy international implication. You see, for instance, here in Lviv, many buildings, even mm -hmm, your building, mm -hmm, are mm -hmm. wearing the Blue Shields uh, emblem, 
which is uh, actually connotating this uh, asset as a cultural property. Eh? So it's, this is recognized within the framework of the UNESCO 1954 Convention for the Protection of Cultural Heritage in an Event of uh, Conflict. But beside this, there are very practical measures how to protect uh, open air uh, monuments in situ, on the place, to reduce eventual impact. No? So also in terms of fireproof, in terms of uh, this, in all this even operation of um, uh, inventories, for instance, for museums, for collections are key. Uh, without uh, doc proper documentation, even in an event of uh, dismantling of collection of uh, illegal exploitation, without mm -hmm. proper documentation and inventory, it's very difficult uh, for security forces, uh, for law enforcement uh, authority to identify and to block this. And this is an area where uh, already since uh, March, the alert for risk of illicit, uh, um, illicit uh, trafficking, mm -hmm, illicit mm -hmm, export yeah. of heritage was also highlighted uh, internationally by uh, UNESCO Director General, alerting neighboring countries and on uh, this risk. And uh, for instance, uh, practical action are that uh, this year in January, uh, we had also some training sessions uh, with regional law enforcement and security border authorities from Ukraine, but also mm -hmm. neighboring countries on how to, uh, to track, how to identify, to check and to uh, stop this uh, possible, eventual uh, uh, outflow also of uh, cultural heritage. Definitely, this is very important work because Ukraine has a lot of, a lot of heritage uh, as you know, and, and you, you, UNESCO also has like probably eight spots in Ukraine that are or more that are uh, eight. Uh, UNESCO and, uh, World as Heritage. you know, now since 2023, the, the historic city of Odessa has also been uh, listed as a World Heritage in, uh, in danger. And we see how in danger it is, uh, even the, this last night uh, it was strike, stroken so strongly by Russians. Uh, getting back to, to the topic of uh, damage itself, uh, not only prevention, and, but we do know, we do see now a lot of damage uh, of cultural heritage. Uh, of course, we have a, our extreme uh, most probably our most extreme, uh, our most extreme um, uh, damage is is losing people, uh, people's lives. But that's one. So we also have organizations working with that. But you work with damage in culture and heritage. Uh, last year we had uh, an interview in the studio with a great architect from France, Martin Duplantier president of French uh, Architecture Association, and he said, Architecture Association, he said that uh, Russians are destroying our heritage, our uh, buildings that are uh, a heritage of many centuries, because they are trying to destroy our identity. Uh, do you agree on that? And do you think there is a way of making justice work in the future in terms of uh, uh, getting reparations for, for, for this damage in cultural uh, heritage. Certainly, culture is an important part of a country identity. Uh, it's really a link for, with the past, but also a very powerful, um, I would say, driving force for uh, building, building back uh, better and for resilience of communities. So it has a very relevant uh, and crucial role in this uh, in situation of emergency and crisis or conflict or like, like now. The, um, and that's why it's also critical to protect it now and to intervene 
and uh, you mention uh, also these uh, aspects we have also to think that when they are so large uh, or damage eh? we are speaking not only of uh, punctual buildings but also of uh, cities historic mm -hmm. cities mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and i'm uh, thinking for instance to the numerous damage of uh, kharkiv or uh, other other cities so indeed the while looking at uh, recovery and reconstruction from now because of course it's very important to ensure that people can go back they can have back uh, houses they, but at the same time that uh, historic buildings that are there uh, or of cultural values are uh, also in a way uh, protected and integrated in future uh, urban planning because they also have uh, not only just a spiritual, artistic and cultural values, but they also have an economic value for the future. And, uh, this is, uh, and uh, if this is not done in uh, ahead, it risks mm -hmm. also that uh, much of this is, uh, is lost. You mean that the work has to be done already right now? Yes, it's, it's fundamental. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's why when we were saying, you know, before you were asking me, okay, what do you do in terms of repairs, uh, prevention, but even repairs. Now we have already started many repairs in Odessa for the museums, in Kiev for museums, but also Kharkiv, Skorvoda museums, all mm -hmm. these uh, cultural uh, public, I would say, you know, collective assets, which are uh, a source for history, for identity. You know? Uh, this is uh, one uh, uh, dimension. Uh, the, the, we should not forget people also, eh? because behind buildings there is uh, people sure. and also uh, all this vital role of uh, artists, of creators. And even for that, we have been starting a program to work to ensure their livelihood, that they can continue uh, produce, create, even in difficult conditions. Between uh, um, August and December, we have been supporting uh, some uh, community and artist, uh, artistic projects, not only in Kiev, in Lviv, in ivano Frankiv, but also Kharkiv, Dnipro, Kherson. Eh? And this mm -hmm. shows also how culture is a source of uh, resilience. And uh, much more, we hope to be able to continue to do this. We started now a second round, but mm -hmm. much more, of course, is, uh, is needed in this, uh, in this sense. Is there any way people can apply for that, those artists who need this support? Absolutely, absolutely. All, uh, um, all um, projects call that UNESCO is, uh, is um, providing for the country are always open call and uh, can be accessed uh, through the invisible from our uh, website, uh, from our uh, regular uh, official uh, channels. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, currently we have, uh, for instance, a call, which is uh, open also to invite uh, cultural associations, uh, to invite uh, NGOs to uh, contribute to uh, bring this vital role of uh, culture also as art therapy mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, in, in this uh, sense. Yes, and actually this is also linked to the uh, key project that, that is uh, hosting uh, Lviv City, which mm -hmm. is uh, the, uh, the establishment of a cultural hub here in Lviv. It's a project uh, started already since uh, January. Mm -hmm. uh, supported uh, by the, um, the, the Spanish cooperation and is really looking at uh, providing a platform for artists, for artists not only of Lviv, but uh, all Ukrainian artists and those uh, that who are currently moving here, but also to reconnect with uh, other cities. And let's not forget that Lviv is also a UNESCO creative uh, city. So this is mm -hmm. clearly showing you know, the, 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 the dynamic of uh, this. And to uh, provide uh, as a platform this uh, cultural hub to provide uh, training, capacity buildings, but also co-working space, residency for artists, 
for instance. And um, it, we are currently working on the uh, physical rehabilitation of the premises, uh, and we hope very soon to start the, uh, these, uh, the programs. We are currently working mm. also through consultations with the uh, association, right. the, commu the large community, no, not only of uh, cultural associations and practitioners, but also in uh, youth association, educational uh, um, uh, areas, because everything is interconnected. And this is also one of the aspects of uh, UNESCO uh, mandate to have uh, this uh, transversal, I would say, approach. Uh, thank you for that. And I do, do think that we can also uh, help with promoting uh, all these projects and uh, inform inform our our community in Lviv. Um, but culture and heritage is something where uh, UNESCO is known in Lviv already because also because as you mentioned we are a, a creative uh, UNESCO city we are world heritage, uh, world heritage uh, and UNESCO World Heritage but also uh, if I'm correct, UNESCO from its very beginning uh, since World War II was created with the aim to facilitate, to help education and to, especially in this, in, in, in the war and post-war time, I think this is a very big challenge for Ukraine, especially nowadays and all con in all conversations with different key stakeholders from businesses, government, NGOs where we and culture people where we have these conversations we hear that all of them are saying we need to make our education even better and we need to save our education what is your point on that and what is UNESCO doing here in, in Lviv in, in Ukraine yeah absolutely the while working in uh, supporting education there is uh, this uh, two double uh, aspect approach which are really concurrent in a way complain complementary one is uh, to work in uh, what we call education in emergency to ensure really that uh, children can continue but also it's very important already and this is uh, the, stra the strategy of uh, UNESCO as uh, for the, the education for all uh, approach in the framework of the sustainable development goal for, for education mm -hmm. is uh, really to, to ensure and prepare long term. And uh, while uh, we are, um, and, and this is um, very important because actually we are current, we have been uh, starting also working on uh, policies in education, supporting the Ministry of Education and Science in, uh, in this process, in the priority identified as I mentioned, for, uh, for um, education in these two tracks that we are currently implementing, um, we have one which is continuity of uh, learning. We have been distributing uh, since, uh, I mean, uh, the, uh, till uh, the December, eh? more than 50,000 devices to teachers in all Ukraine regions. Eh? with the ministry for distance learning for, for distance, distance learning mm -hmm. but at the same time working with teachers working with ministries working with institutions to work on the pedagogical aspects how to bring in also uh, mental health and psychosocials uh, how to integrate for instance social social and emotional learning so all these innovative also skills which are fundamental also for more long term mental health and psychosocials uh, we have done uh, with the ministry and we have supported the ministry in doing this uh, thorough assessment of facilities in mental health and psychosocial support within the education systems. Based on that and an agreed roadmap with all partners, national, international, working in this domain, as you said, there are many actors. Uh, uh, we started um, uh, now also working on uh, training from policies now for to training. 
mm-hmm. of uh, psychologists in schools. Now that we are speaking, there is a, a four weeks, one month training for uh, 100 psychologists in school that is going on. These psychologists uh, will, at their turn, continue to train almost at the end uh, Mm -hmm, mm 15,000 psychologists and 20,000 teachers to be able to provide services uh, for children. So it's not just a provision on the spot to reply to your question after my longer description, but uh, it's really how to to contribute to improve the the system Mm -hmm. in the more long term. Thank you. Uh and I, I suppose much of that, something of that is also being implemented in Lviv? The, the, the training, uh, yes, the training for the for education is, as I mentioned, the distribution that has been done in all, uh, in all regions, all regions. Um, especially mm-hmm. those who according to priorities, according to certain True. criteria where this were more needed. Uh, distance learning does not uh, substitute uh, in presence, as you know, is becoming more hybrid format according to when where shelter in schools are available or not, but also is a way also to keep ties with mm-hmm. the students uh, who are with the families uh, who now are out of the country. Uh, and this is also another important point because in terms of uh, policies, analysis in terms of, uh, I would say, this more um, possible, creating the framework for these students also to be reintegrated in the Ukrainian system. UNESCO has uh, analyzed almost more than 100 uh, policy structure and infrastructure in uh, European countries Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. to understand how to facilitate that uh, there is a recognition and uh, this also can they can easily reintegrate but also uh, to look at the long term eh, we since uh, last year 22 uh, with the unicef we have been assisting the ministry in uh, setting up uh, this uh, digital platform for students uh, to access and con- conduct uh, the examination to uh, pass from high school to university and there were more than 200,000. This platform is still active this year, so is uh, building in an emergency, has been also contributed to strengthen the national system and to enable it to be not just for one ad hoc intervention, but mm-hmm. also with a more long-term uh, impact on the education uh, system. I do believe this is very modern approach and uh, thank you for everything you're doing. And to, to end this conversation, I would just ask two things. One about Lviv, as we are sitting here, what is your uh, reflection? I, I don't know, have you been here for many times already, but can you say what do you see, what do you see positive sides of the city development and maybe you see something that could be improved as well? And the second thing about the strengths of Ukraine and Ukrainians, uh, what do you what do you see? What is there something particular you would you would uh, you learned uh, through the time you are here? Absolutely, I think the two are your two questions are connected, and uh, I had already the opportunity to be in Lviv several times, eh? not mm-hmm. uh, much. Uh, as I uh, hope there will be more other positive opportunities to be here. And um, I think that it's uh, really an incredible city and uh, there is uh, very vital, right? very, I'm not speaking also about the monuments and its architecture, but I'm speaking also of the energies mm-hmm. of professionals, mm-hmm. of uh, this uh, vital uh, uh, forces that are uh, here. Uh, certainly, um, the, uh, the and 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 this is something that I I think I've been uh, seeing and uh, learning also from Ukraine more in general. Uh, 
uh, as uh, many of uh, I particularly appreciated, and I think this is something when uh, looking at, uh, for instance, cultural uh, expressions, uh, many are uh, surprised uh, to see is how the sector is resilient. I saw empty museums uh, becoming uh, uh, a live center where people, families are there, are uh, going through their uh, the trend to their past, their presence, but also the future. I I shared the time with uh, people also in the shelter waiting, and uh, it has been also a, an a, a way to know the mm -hmm. human side uh, of uh, this incredible uh, country and uh, population. So really, uh, this. Uh, Resilience, it's what uh, I, I think it's a very important aspect and uh, what also the, what we can contribute uh, has been uh, witnessing in a way. Thank you. Thank you for this wonderful conversation. Thank you for all the work UNESCO is doing in Ukraine. And I do hope that we will really have more chances to have uh, meetings with positive reasons uh to meet here and uh see you next time thank you thank you thank you for your attention to unesco action in ukraine thank you